Coming up next, it's a UFC women's bantamweight division matchup. Well, she told us on Thursday she threw her first jab at four years old, but she has developed into a well-rounded MMA fighter. All of that said, boxing is still her bread and butter. Oh, it's unbelievable. At four, she's throwing a jab. I'm telling you. Right? We're all talking about our kids learning to ride a bicycle. This young lady was in the gym getting better, learning how to fight under a, spe a specific set of rules that carried her all the way up to the UFC. She is a phenomenal fighter, but at the end of the day, it's her boxing that leads the dance. Head's never on a center line. She does a very good job of mixing up the target. Goes high, goes low. It's truly amazing to watch someone with such a specified skill set be this successful in mixed martial arts. Yeah, near perfect technique, which you will see here in a matter of moments. All right, well, she's one of the more high-level wrestlers in this division, DC. She's got a lot of different throws and takedowns and trips in her arsenal and figures to be able to put those to good use here tonight. And she's going to have to, right? And as you mentioned, throws, John, it is unbelievable to watch her highlight reel of lateral drop, the way she double legs people and carries them across the octagon to the big slams, to the transition. Not only is she trying to secure takedowns, she allows opponents to get back to their feet so that she can get another takedown. It's all about tearing the gas tank of the opponent down. She's done that since she was a little girl, and now she uses that same approach in her UFC career. And I'd hate to call her a specialist because I think that sells her short, but her wrestling is certainly special and would appear to be the path of least resistance in this matchup tonight. All right, just about ready for live action. Here is tonight's tale of the tape. So a more than five-year gap between these two fighters when it comes to the age with similar height and reach. All right, now to get us started, here is Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds in the UFC bantamweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, a boxer holding a professional record of 14 wins, six losses. She stands five feet nine inches tall, weighing in at 135 pounds. Arena Aldana! And now introducing her opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This woman is a wrestler, holding a professional record of 13 wins, three losses. She stands five feet eight inches tall, weighing in at 135 pounds. Fighting out of Manos, Arizona, Brazil, Catlin! Vino Vieira! And when the action begins, our referee in charge, Herb Dean. Herb Dean, our referee for this one. Well, we're in Anaheim, California at Honda Center tonight. A lot of UFC history and championship history inside these walls. It's so crazy how the UFC has blessed this arena with so many title fights. Ronda Rousey, Kane Brock, Kane Dos Santos, Me Jones, Me Stipe, Woodley, Cyborg. So many championships have been defended in this arena, and so many championships have changed hands in this arena. Tonight, you get to step foot in what we can call Championship City for the UFC. A nice shot to the body. And once again, looking for that highlight reel KO with that front kick. Vieta gets caught with that punch. Don't be afraid to get that head off the center line. All right, so no surprise once... Oh, there's the double leg takedown. Oh, and with conviction, she moves right into half guard. Without much effort, she was able to pass from her full guard right into half guard. Vieta's back in side control. Guard position for her here, and if you're the bottom fighter, this is truly a case of, of pick your poison. Yeah, you gotta pick your poison. And if you're on the bottom, you gotta be trying to find a way to escape that bottom leg. You cannot allow your opponent, you cannot allow her to sit on your leg and just throw big damage and strikes. You've got to make sure you're on an elbow control and underhook and getting back to your feet. 
Just over two minutes to go. All right, so her ground control is outstanding. Half guard is when she's at her most dangerous. Yes, yeah, she's at her most dangerous when she has the half guard because she's so brutal with the ground and pound. She likes to go after fighters and really wear on them, force them to make decisions to give their backs so that she can chase her submission, or they're gonna lay on their back and just get beaten up from the top from that beautiful half guard position. All right, half guard position for her here, and this is a spot where we've seen her have a lot of wild success in previous fights. She has a tremendous amount of success in this position because she's so knowledgeable. She keeps the right side underhook, and she just goes to work with that left arm. She's posting and elbowing. She's building her posture and punching. There are just so many different ways for her to score strikes from this position. How good is her movement here on the ground, right? Shades of Ray Borg just transitioning so beautifully. Yeah, she's so good at transitions and movement. Her ability is unmatched. Man, she is just nonstop on the ground, moving in all the right directions. Another nice transition by her there. She's moving a lot, but every movement has purpose. All right, now we take a look back at some of the action in that previous round, DC. A lot to like on both sides. I mean, both were intent on going forward. And what happens when nobody wants to take a step back? They beat in the middle. That's exactly what they did, and they both found success over the course of that round. You ready to fight? Ready. Second round here. Nice punch, man. So she goes to the kick and promptly lands. Nicely done there. She has done that over and over again. Every time she throws it, it's landing. Oh, that's a big, big swing. And has her opponent on the ropes. She threw her entire body into that massive uppercut. And she has seen the rewards of her hard work. Can't take pictures now. She has to react. She has to go chase the finish. Takedown, no problem. Fantastic takedown win. Oh! Oh, what a beautiful counter to the guillotine there. Gets side mount, and now maybe the Von Flute choke will be there. Holden St. Cruz has got to like that transition there. the submission. Clearly she had an opening and she closed the show pretty effectively there. That is one of the bigger wins of her UFC career. All right, so that's the end of the round. A lot to like in there, DC, particularly when it comes to her offensive wrestling. She's evolving, right? She's gotten better. She did not have this skill set before. Now you watch her and she looks like an Olympian. She looks like a girl that can wrestle at the highest levels. She scored so many takedowns in that round. Her wrestling coach must be very proud. So that win by submission figures to silence any remaining doubters, and that certainly puts the rest of the division on notice. Huge result for her here tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Herb Dean is called to stop to this contest at two minutes, 39 seconds of round number two. For the winner by submission, Ketlin Benamino! Oh, well, there she is. A lot of people felt like this fight was destined to go the distance. She had other ideas. She said that if this fight went to the ground, it did not matter how good her opponent is. She was going to submit her. She did exactly that. She feels like she's levels above the rest of the game in the ground.